Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. City. Where's the best hotel, driver? The Dodge House right down the street. You and the missus will be real comfortable there. Thanks. You'll have your bags down in a few minutes. Uh, give me a hand, Tilda. Doesn't seem like we could be here already. I thought it would take longer. Oh, that's because you're so excited. Come on, let's wait over here, huh? Right. Well, what do you think of Dodge? I'll let you know after we get something to eat. I'm famished, Tom. So am I. Where'd that driver get to? Well, you must be inside. Well, he'll know a good place to eat. You find him, Tom. I'll wait here. Don't you run away now. You never have to worry about that. I'll be back in a minute. Well, hello there, Missy. I beg your pardon. You're the prettiest little thing I've seen around here. How about you and me having a little drink somewhere? Got a pocket full of money. Mm. Hey, what? What's the matter? You a school marm or something, huh? <laughs> well, that don't matter. I like school marm. Why don't you go back to your trough, mister? Well, you little hussy. Let, you... let go of me. I ought to slap you. Let you. Get your hands off her. People don't shove me, mister. Don't they? <coughs> you all right, Tilda? Did he hurt you? I'm all right. He's just a drunk. Uh, he's more than just a drunk, man. What do you mean? He's Ed Ivers' partner. Well, I never heard of Ed Ivers. He and Varden here run a cattle outfit just across the river. Ivers is kind of a dangerous man. He had quite a reputation back in Texas. A gunman, you mean? Yeah, they say he was real handy. Oh, Tom... Varden's going to be pretty mad when he comes, too. Nobody's going to insult my wife. I don't care whose partner he is. Just too bad it had to happen. Well, I'm not going to worry about it. Where'd you say that eating place was? Delmonico is right down there. Thanks. Let's go, Tilda. This idea you're going to work here in Dodge? Just for a while, Tom. Till we get on our feet a little. Besides, I'd like to work in a general store like that. Well, how do you know he needs anybody? I could tell by looking in the window. He's got lots of lady wear to sell. Well, if it'll make you happy. And just think, I'll be making money too. We add it to what you'll make at the loading pens, and we'll be able to get our own place that much sooner. What's the matter? Uh, nothing. That man been staring at you. It doesn't matter, Tom. These people in Dodge got to learn something. Please, Tom, don't make trouble. He's the one making it. Hey, you. Uh, me? You're the one staring at the lady, ain't you? <laughs> I guess I was kind of looking her way. She's my wife, and I won't stand for it, mister. Well, see, I thought she was somebody I know down in Texas. 
Marjorie May Grilk, as a matter of fact. Now, look, you Mr. Know, I ain't seen Marjorie May Grilk in ten years. She's just a little bitty old thing then. I probably wouldn't know her even if it is. Now, her. that ain't You know, point. your wife looks something like her. That's all I didn't mean, no way. I ain't been in Dodge an hour, and I've had nothing but trouble with you people. I said I didn't mean no offense. Well, you just watch your step. Yeah. My goodness, Mr. Dunn, he sure is a hothead. <laughs> Well, the way you were staring at her, I can't say I blame him, Chester. Oh, well, doggone it, I did think she might maybe be Margie May Grill. So you were mistaken. Well, he's just looking for trouble, Mr. Dillon. Chester, finish your coffee. Thank you. Here's your change. Would there be anything else? Oh, not today, but I'll be back next week, dear. You're welcome any time, madam. Bye. Oh, excuse me, boy. Hello, may I... Hey, you. Hello, missy. What are you doing here? There's that girl I told you about, Ivers. Well, the one at the stage depot? Yeah. If there's something you want, I'll get Mr. Jonas. He's right out no, back. No, no, wait. wait My name is Ed Ivers, and I, I've seen you before somewhere. That isn't likely. This is my second day in Dodge. No, I don't mean Dodge. Where are you from, anyway? It's none of your business where I'm from. Now, if you want something... Wait a minute. I, rem I remember. <laughs> a river boat. The Memphis Queen. What? Well, that's it, ain't it? It's about two years back. Oh, I did a lot of gambling on that river, but don't you remember me? Ed Ivers? I don't know what you're talking about. You mean it, Ivers? You you know her on the Mississippi? Well, I'm sure of it now. <laughs> and you was just as pretty then, too. That's a lie. I won't stand for this. Now, get out, both of hey, you. Hey, that, uh, that young fellow that hit Varden here, was it your husband? Get out of here, I said. You never get tired of him, just let me know. <laughs> Come on, Varden. What a cheat. Oh, no. This coming Tuesday evening on most of these stations, hear the CBS radio special, The Friars Club Testimonial Dinner for screen star Gary Cooper. That famous friendly verbal dart thrower, George Jessel, will be roast master. With Jack Benny, George Burns, Milton Berle, Bob Hope, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, Carl Sandberg, Greer Garson, Audrey Hepburn, and Art Linkletter participating in the festivities. Hear for yourself The Friars Gary Cooper Testimonial Tuesday evening over most of these stations. Sir, <laughs> I sure am glad I have my loading pens today, Tom. Oh, I'm awful hot-headed sometimes, Chester. I'm sorry. Nah, nah, nah. Ain't no harm done, but I must admit I sure didn't take much of a liking to you yesterday. <laughs> And here today, I am buying you a drink of liquor. And what's worse, I'm drinking it. <laughs> I don't know what got into me yesterday, Tom. Thinking on it, your wife, Tilda, don't look none at all like that Margie May Grill down in Texas. You know, I thought you made that all up. Oh, my land, no, now that's the truth. Except Margie May Grill wasn't nowhere near as pretty as your Tilda. Oh, so that's her name. What? Tilda. Uh, you remember the name, Ivor? Oh, no, the name don't matter. What is this? Uh, Ed Ivers here met your wife today, young fella. Look, mister, I don't take to men like you trying to be friendly with my wife. You should have learned that yesterday, and I'd just as soon you didn't mention her name in a place like this. <laughs> Ed, he's up like... I mean it, mister. Oh, don't get yourself all riled up, boy. Yeah. Just that your wife's no better than she ought to be. I'll kill you for that. Well, now... He ain't armed, Ivers. So he ain't. I can get my gun. Come on, you do anyway. Now you leave him alone. Keep out of this, Chester. Your being a gunman don't bother me at all, mister. Well, now, I guess nothing bothers you, does it? 
married a woman off in a river boat. You watch what you're saying. Your wife, Tilda, is it? Worked on the Memphis Queen. I rode it down the Mississippi several times. Mister, I'm going to have to kill you, you now. You couldn't kill me even if you had a gun. And it ain't worth your life trying. Not over no cheap riverboat woman. You wait right here. I'll get my gun oh, and I'll be back. No, I ain't got time, boy. We got to get back out the place. I'll come after you. There's no need for that. I'll be back in town sometime tomorrow and you can live till then. All right. All right, I'll meet you right here. Now, I'm telling you, she ain't worth dying for, boy. But I'll be here. Oh, now, Tom, you just don't never mind what he said. I'll kill him. I'll kill both of them. why you're here. Till and me have no secrets from each other. I told her all about it. I see. Did you know Ed Ivers is an ex-gunman? I can't let any man talk like that about my wife. He'd be a hard man to beat. That ain't important, Marshal. You get killed, what'll happen to Tilda? She'd be better off than having a coward for a husband, wouldn't she? Look, you're both young. You've got a long life together if you play it right. Uh... I was just going down for a bottle, Marshal. Wait a minute, Tom. Maybe you'll join us in a drink before supper. Providing we talk about something else. Give him a chair, Tilda. You know any way I can talk him out of getting himself killed? If I did, I... I'd have done it myself, Marshal. Please, sit down. No, thank you. Of course, I can't blame Tom. And I said some pretty rough things. You believe it? I didn't say that. Well, it's true. I did work on the Memphis Queen. A whole year. I don't remember Ed Ivers, but it doesn't matter. I know what you're thinking. I'm a liar and a cheat. I'm no good. You're thinking what any man would think, including Tom. You need help, Tilda. How can anybody help me now? I think I know somebody who can. What? After supper, you tell Tom to go have a drink, and then you come over to my office. And... All right, Marshal. <laughs> Hello, Matt. Kitty, this is Tilda. Hello, Tilda. Hello, Kitty. I'm leaving you in good hands, Tilda. Uh, I'll see you later, Kitty. Sure, Matt. Thank you, Marshal. Come in, Tilda. Sit down. Drink? No. No, thanks. Um, Matt told me everything, Tilda. You've got quite a problem, haven't you? And there isn't a thing I can do about it. How much do you love your husband? Oh, Kitty. Do you think he loves you? I know he does. He's going to find out about me someday. He won't love me then. Well, how do you know? What man would? Tell me about the Memphis Queen, Tilda. That riverboat. Just what did you do while you worked on it? I sang a little got men to buy drinks. That's all. Still, it uh, gives the girl a bad reputation, doesn't it? According to men like Ed Ivers. Well, a lot of people think the same way. How about your husband? Tom? Tom doesn't know, Kitty. 
No, he doesn't, does he? Well, I guess it doesn't matter anyway, Tilda. He can't amount to much. What? Who can't amount to much? Tom. I mean, if you don't trust him, have faith in him, you can't be much good, can he? Trust him? I'd trust him with my life. Would you? Of course I would. Then why haven't you told him the truth? You're better off staying here in the hotel, Tilly. Why do you go to the Long Branch and wait for Ed Ivers to come to town? Now, don't worry. There's never been a gunman yet who ain't been beat sooner or later. Tom! Tom, can't we just go away right now, somewhere? Well, you know we can't. Tom! Oh, here now. Tom, I... I, I gotta tell you something. Now, don't get all upset. Everything's gonna be all right. What Ed Ivers says is true. What? It's true. I did work on the Memphis Queen. Well, now, what are you saying? You've gone crazy? It's true, but it wasn't like you'd think. Stop that now. I'm not lying to you now. I couldn't tell you before. I tried. You, you mean it, don't you? Yes, I mean it. Tom! Tom! Tom Cook, aren't you? How'd you know? I guessed. Who are you, anyway? Kitty Russell. I own this place. Oh. Oh, look, Miss Kitty, I can't talk to you now. You must be awful good with a gun to face Ivers. I'm waiting for him. You've got a nice wife, Tom. You've got it mixed up. I don't have a wife. Oh? Huh? Well, you better brace yourself. Ivers and his partner just came in. Now, just get out of my way. Yeah, huh? good luck. Get over to the bar, Martin. Yeah. Well, boy, it's your move. Go on, draw. I... I got no reason. Huh? What you said about Tilda. It's true, Ivers. You doggone. I found out you was right. You found out just in time. Now, it ain't that I'm afraid of you. No, of course not, boy. I never said you was. Well, come on, let me buy you a drink. No, thanks. I, I got one. Barkeep, you set out a bottle here. Matter of fact, make it two. Two bottles? Yeah, we're having us a drink, Martin. To Tom Cook. Now, there's a real man. He can admit when he's wrong. And it ain't everybody can do that, is it? Oh, he found out his wife come off a riverboat after all, did he? Yeah, that's right. Hey, our boy. You just go ahead and have yourself a drink on Ed Ivers. No, thanks. He ain't very friendly, is he? Well, you can't blame him after finding out about his wife. It must be quite a blow. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's well out of it, you ask me. That's right. Hey, I know them women. And they are plumb bad all over. Oh, yeah. No, you can't trust them riverboat cheats, nary a one. No, no. You sure found that out by now, ain't you, boy? Ain't you, boy? I've heard all I want to hear. That did it, boy. You forced me, Ivers. Go ahead. Bring your gun up, boy. I'm waiting. Stop it, Ivers. Well, now you're a cool one. You shoot that boy again, I'll blow your head off with a shotgun. I'll put a bullet in you before you can squeeze a trigger. You wouldn't reach the door, like. Who says I wouldn't? I do. But drop the gun, Ivers. This ain't your fight, Marshal. Drop it, I said. All right. All right, some of you men, get Tom up the docks. He drew on me first, Marshal. Get out of here, Ivers, and take Barton with you. 
I said he drew first, you hear? Don't push your luck, Ivers. You taking over for that boy? I am. <laughs> well, he sure ain't worth it. Come on, Bart. Are you all right, Kitty? Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, man, I was so scared. Hey, Kitty, you did fine. Hey, Sam, I think Miss Russell could use a drink. Does it, Tom? You're going to be all right. You haven't a thing to worry about. Oh, yes, I have, Doc. I'll be in the other room if you need anything. Hilda. Is it all right if I talk to him now, Doc? Sure. Thanks. Tom. I didn't know you were here. I've been here the whole time. Doc didn't want me to bother you at first. He says I'm going to be all right. Yes, I'm thankful for that. Tom, I'm sorry. Why didn't you tell me right from the beginning? I was afraid you wouldn't understand. I was, I was afraid I might lose you. I love you so much, Tom. I didn't want anything to happen. It wouldn't have made any difference if I'd only known from the start. But I wasn't sure. I... I should have had enough faith to tell you. I don't guess I gave you much of a chance, Tilda. I guess... Maybe we was both wrong. This is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brand. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving, more of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good brand muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you are shopping, get Kellogg's All Brand and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston and adapted for radio by Frank Perris. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Gene Bates, John Daner, Lawrence Dobkin, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.